Hello, welcome to today's edition of Today in History. My name is Sotomye Fiesi Mama. Right, let's get cracking. On this day, in the year 1511, let's find out what happened. This guy called Giorgio Vasari was born. He was an Italian Renaissance painter and an art historian. And the title of his book is Vasari's Lives. So he was born in Arezzo, the Republic of Florence. So Florence was a republic at the time. Florence is now part of Italy. He died in 1574. So that's a painting or a, a drawing of a bust of Vasari's. Now let's look at some of his paintings. So you can see that he was mainly a religious painter, but this was a time when the Catholic Church held sway in that part of the world, now referred to as Italy. So you can see a cross there, crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ has been taken down from the cross. An angel visiting Mary. This must be the Annunciation. Another religious painting, Mary with Jesus Christ, the infant, Joseph by her side. And this must have been shortly after Jesus Christ was born. Cherubs at the top. Another religious painting. Um, trying to figure out this one out. Not sure what this is about. Mary and the infant Jesus Christ again. So, mainly a religious painter. So that's Jesus Christ in the middle there. Um, marriage at Cana or at Cana. So, Giorgio Vasari's paintings for you. He died in 1574, born on this day in 1511. We move on to the next person, William Penn. That's him there. He was an English philosopher and founder of Pennsylvania. So that's where the name um, Pennsylvania comes from, Penn, from his last name, Penn. He died on this day in 1718 at the age of 73. He was born on the 14th of October, 1644, in London, England. He was also an early Quaker and, like I mentioned earlier, found out the province of Pennsylvania, the English North American colony and the future Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He was an early champion of democracy and religious freedom. So hence, I um, uh, did mention that he was a Quaker. And... Um, it was notable for his good relations and successful treaties with the Lenape Indians. Under his direction, the city of Pennsylvania was planned and developed. I think I did mention um, him a few videos ago. I will put a link to that video. So this guy is interesting because, you know, I just realized yesterday that um, this is a bit of a surprise. Today is a day of surprises, if you like. There's some interesting developments that I'm going to touch on today. Interesting things that have happened in history that I wasn't aware and I think most people are not aware of. So keep watching and you'll find out what these are. The first one I'm about to touch on now is this guy, um, William Penn. That face may not look familiar, but when I show you uh, the next picture, then you will, um, it's going to be obvious. It's going to be obvious. Um, or the next set of pictures. So, that's William Penn for you, and um, who was a Quaker. It's another picture of him. And if the penny hasn't dropped yet, then the penny is going to suddenly drop now. Okay, so our Quaker Oats, the guy who's here is actually William Penn as well. And you can see that the Quaker Oats gets the name from his... Uh, sect, if you like. I don't know if they like being called a sect, but they're um, 
a sect of Christianity or Christendom, if you like. So that's the guy for you, on the, for those who eat Quaker Oats. That's William Penn on your Quaker Oats um, boxes. Okay, so quite interesting, I, 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 must, uh, I must admit. I never <laughs> made the connection until yesterday when I was um, doing my research for this video. So let's move on to the year 1818. Emily Bronte, one of the trio of the Bronte sisters, was born on this day. And she is remembered for her only novel, Wuthering Heights. Um, it was published in 1847 and set on the Yorkshire Moor. So 1847 was a year before she died, unfortunately. It is regarded as a classic of English literature. She was a sister of Charlotte Bronte, who, whose name, the pen name was Jane Eyre, and, or she wrote Jane Eyre, my apologies, and Anne Bronte. And uh, her book was Tenant of Wildfell Hall, with whom she published a collection of poems in 1846, so two years before she died. Okay, so let's move on to the next person of repute on this day, and it's Henry Ford, the guy who founded Ford, the Ford Motor Company. He was born on this day in 1863, died on the 7th of April 1947, was an American industrialist and business magnate, founder of the Ford Motor Company and chief developer of the assembly line technique of mass production. By creating the first automobile that middle-class Americans could afford, he converted the automobile from an expensive curiosity into an accessible conveyance that would profoundly impact the landscape of the 20th century. So Henry Ford, born on this day in 1863. In 1935, the first Penguin book was published, starting the paperback revolution. This reminds me of um, the guy who owns Amazon. He started by selling books. Today, 50% of online transactions are done by this company. It's absolutely mind-boggling. You know, I watched an interview, um, or rather listened to a training yesterday, and this guy who was talking about... Um, Bezos, so the Amazon boss, on how his business wasn't books or whatever he's doing today. It was, or it is, about data, data collection. So essentially what um, Bezos has been doing over the last two decades is collecting data, finding out more about our spending habits, knowing more about us, knowing what to advertise to us, at what given time. So that gives us um, or him a better chance of selling to us when we need to be sold to. That is an amazing marketing model. You know, it's absolutely fantastic that he can predict when you're going to buy a certain piece of, a certain item, a book, a dress, you know, and recently I bought a dress for you know my lady friend and I went back on my transaction history and I found that I bought something for her on average every month without realizing that. So this is just an example. You know, we're not even talking about things that you need, things that are necessary. Um, bread, for instance, um, <laughs> you find out that there's, there's a particular day, for instance, that you are more likely to buy bread. You know, you buy your bread and then maybe it will last about a week and then on a Monday, for instance, seven days later, you're buying bread again. You know, so it goes with every other thing. So what this guy has been doing is collecting data on as many people as possible. So he's not just selling to them once, he's selling to them several times over. So that's how he makes his money. And as that's happening, more people are joining the Amazon bandwagon and, like, you know, so he's not just 
acquiring, making as much money from you as possible, but he's acquiring more customers also in the process and also collecting data from them as well. So fantastic money, um, marketing uh, model, I must say. Anyway, we're just talking about Penguin Books and I went uh, off tangent, but yeah, I think it's relevant if you are thinking of starting a business. Data is very, very important. Data is very, very, very important. It's crucial actually to your success or failure in um, business. Okay, let's move on to the year 1947. 10 minutes already on the recording. So 19, 1947 on this day, this man, Arnold Schwarzenegger was born. So happy birthday, he's 73 years old today. Full name, Arnold Alois, or Alloy Schwarzenegger. He's an Austrian-American actor, a businessman, and former politician and professional bodybuilder. So former politician, for those of you who do not know, he was governor of California at one point. Um, he served from 2003 to 2011, so two terms. And as of 2020, he is the most recent Republican governor of California. Okay, so that's a young Schwarzenegger, the bodybuilder, and um, Schwarzenegger to the left on in during his latter years, so in his 70s, I guess, early 70s, that picture must have been taken. Okie dokie, 1963, Lisa Kudrow, famous, made famous by the Friends show, the comedy. Um, she's an American actress, comedian, writer, singer, I didn't know she was a singer, that's interesting, and producer. After making guest appearances in several television sitcoms, including Cheers, she came to prominence with her main role of Phoebe Buffet in Friends in 1994. So between 1994 and 2004, she played this role, receiving a Screen Actors Guild Award nomination. Kudrow initially portrayed Phoebe's twin sister Ursula on the television sitcom Mad About You. So happy birthday, Lisa Kudrow. Is 57 today. On this day, 1965, President Johnson signs Medicare into law. So this is a picture of that location. Um, it is a health insurance program for elderly Americans. And the bill signing ceremony, which took place at the Truman Library, pictured here, former President Harry Truman was enrolled as Medicare's first beneficiary and received the first Medicare card. Johnson wanted to recognize Truman, who in 1945 had become the first president to propose national health insurance, an initiative that was opposed at the time by Congress. Okay, so 1970 on this day, this man called Christopher Nolan, British American film director, was born. So he's 50 today. Happy birthday. Nolan's films, which include The Dark Knight trilogy, Inception, The Prestige, and Interstellar, have earned 26 Oscar nominations and grossed over $4 billion in sales. His films are best known for their philosophical, sociological, and ethical concepts exploring human morality. It's interesting that Interstellar is one of the films that he's um, directed and he happens to have been born on the 30th of July. Reason being the July from the third week of July, third week, fourth week, up to first week in August, this is the best time for space travel because the planets that um, these rockets, man on man, head towards. This is the time that it takes a shorter space of time to get there. So it takes about seven months to get to Mars, for instance. And that's one thing I'm going to touch on in this video as well. Um, so if spacecraft are sent to outer planets, to the moon or to Mars, it takes a lot longer if that doesn't happen in, in um, July. So third week, fourth week in July, or at most first week in August. So that's the reason. Um, I don't know if there's any other reason, but that's the reason that um, space flight happens at this time. In fact, there's one that launched today a few hours ago. I'm going to talk about that, like I said. So let's move on to 1970. 
1981. Hope Solo, this lady here, American goalkeeper, beautiful lady. Hope Amelia Solo was born on this day in 1981. She's an American former soccer goalkeeper. She was a goalkeeper for the United States women's national soccer team from 2000 to 2016. Wow, 16 years. And is a World Cup champion and two-time Olympic gold medalist. After playing at the collegiate level for the University of Washington, she played professionally for the Philadelphia Charge in the Women's United Soccer Association. So happy birthday, she's 39 today. Hope Amelia Solo, 1976. I did say that some interesting stuff was coming up. Caitlin Jenner, also known as Bruce Jenner. Previously, I should say, <laughs> known as Bruce Jenner. Um, as you can see, this is someone who obviously has undergone a sex change. Uh, so, transsexual, known as... Bruce Jenner, so he wins gold in the men's decathlon at the Montreal Olympics on this day in 1976. Jenner's 8,617 points set a world record in the event. The secret to Jenner's success was preparation, he says. So he was born William Bruce Jenner, he's now known as Caitlin Jenner. So self-explanatory picture here a man who has now become a woman okay you might also remember him in connection with um uh the kardashians so let's move on to the year 2003 this vehicle the volkswagen Volkswagen B2 rolls off the assembly line in Mexico for the last time. So the old style Volkswagen in 2003. And this particular model is called the 1971 to 1973 Volkswagen Type 1. And um, yeah, so this takes me way back to my childhood days. Um, had an uncle who had one of these. And um, yeah, good old days. Nice, strong German car. I was sad to see it go. Well, today we have the modern version, the Bug, which is also quite nice. Okay. So, another interesting thing. Um, though sad, I would um, explain. His name is Li Teng Hui. His last name is actually Lee, so Teng Hui Lee. We would we would address him in, in the Western world. So he is known as Taiwan's Mr. Democracy. Unfortunately, sadly, um, he died today, just a few hours ago, at the age of 97. Now, why was he known as Mr. Democracy? He was Taiwan's former president. Now, Taiwan is also known as the Republic of China, which, you know, my, I, I couldn't quite think straight. I thought China, Taiwan, they're not the same, are they? So, but I did a bit of research and found out that, you know, the China that we all know, most of us know, is known as the People's Republic of China. So this is the Republic of China, more popularly known as Taiwan. Okay, so he... Is in some there's some sources online that would say he's a former president of the Republic of China. So not to confuse that with the People's Republic of China, which is a country with uh, 1.4 billion people. This is Taiwan, which is an island. So I'm going to show you pictures so that um, it becomes clearer. But I'll finish reading about this guy. Um, he was Taiwan's first democratically elected president, and that happened in 1996. He won a landslide um, election, so landslide victory, that followed eight months of intimidating war games and missile tests by China in waters around Taiwan in an attempt to scare voters. So obviously the Chinese, the People's Republic of China, 
leaders of that country were not happy. Um, I suppose they wanted to force Taiwan to become part of them, or Taiwan was part of them and decided to leave and become a democratic country. I guess that's what happened, why he's called Mr. Democracy. Um, so he thrived on defying China's drive to absorb the island. You see what I was talking about? It regards as a wayward province. So they wanted to absorb Taiwan because they saw Taiwan as a wayward province and hoped for Taiwan to be a country of democracy. So that's what he hoped for, this president who died today, former president. So he wanted Taiwan to be a country of democracy, freedom, human rights, and dignity. And it looks like he, suc he succeeded in doing that, or he was succeeding in doing that. Okay, so let's get you some pictures of what where Taiwan is, like I promised, so that at least you have an idea of um, okay, what's going on. First of all, that's the leader for you. And I did mention about his name, so that's his signature there. Um, Lee, his last name is Lee, and his first name is Teng Hui. So Teng Hui Lee, popularly known as Lee Teng Hui. Okay, and then finally the map. So you can see where Taiwan is in relation to China on the map. Okay, last but not least, on this day, today, a few hours ago, NASA launched its mission to Mars. I did mention that space travel was less costly at this time of the year. I did mention that in one of my previous videos as well, because it would take about seven months for this space shuttle to get to Mars. So that happened today and I shall play you a bit of a, yeah. So that's a launch which happened a few hours ago in the United States. I believe it took place in California. So enjoy. So this, ro this um, rocket is called the uh, Perseverance rover. It's lifted off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Also, it's Florida, not, not California. Forgive me. And this happened today, 12.50 p.m. UK time, um, which would be... Uh, we are five hours ahead, so it'll be 7.50 a.m., I believe, in the United States and Florida, particularly. It is the third mission heading to the Red Planet this month after launches by the United Arab Emirates and China, okay? So UAE and China. I think India as well. I think, um, this, um, I think India also uh, sent one into space. Perseverance will travel 314 million miles over a period of nearly seven months, attempting to land on a crater named Jezero. Only eight NASA missions have successfully pulled off a descent to Mars. Okay, I did mention that the Indians um, had an un unsuccessful one a few days ago. And this feat has been described as seven minutes of terror. Wow. Satellite images suggest Jezero used to be a lake more than 3.5 billion years ago when Mars was warmer and wetter. Anyway, so this last um, image here, or the last video was uh, an animation. Okay, so it wasn't the real thing. Everything else before it was, was the real. This is an animation just to show you where um, the spacecraft was, um, Perseverance rover and what they expect it to look like. Obviously, there's no way of capturing it um, for real because you would need an external camera 
you know, to capture what was happening. So they decided to do an animation, which I think is very clever. So that animation shows exactly what's going on at a particular time. You know, based on data that um, the aircraft feeds back to the um, station. Okay, so on that note, we've had 25 minutes on the clock. This is probably the longest so far. Um, we'll end today's Today in History. My name is, again, Sotonia Fiesimama. Um, please like this if you do like the video and do not forget to subscribe as well so that you receive updates of my video uploads. Thanks again, stay safe guys, and I shall see you tomorrow, July 31st, for another edition of Today in History. Bye-bye.